10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, top, allumage P80 et décollage. La propulsion est nominale. Paramètres à bord normaux. Sentinel 2B is on its way. Look at Vega. Les paramètres à bord sont blazing, normaux, la trajectoire est nominale. Blazing a trail across the equatorial skies over the Guiana Space Center, heading north out over the Atlantic. We're just getting the rumble, the sound, if you like, of the launcher here at the Mission Control Center. The job of the first three stages is to get us away from the Earth. Vega's pushing itself away from gravity. And we're burning the first stage. It's called the P-80. That's because 80 is standing for the amount of propellant, 89 tonnes in fact. On the bottom left you can see our altitude is 35 kilometres above Earth. And in the middle our distance from the pad. That's actually the distance if you were to draw a straight line from the pad to the position of the launcher along the Earth. And then on the bottom right you can see is our speed. We're travelling uh, nearly two kilometres per second, not per hour, but per second. Acquisition de la tête de lanceur par la, sta par la station de Saint-Jean. Séparation P80. We've separated, du 23. separated the P80 and lit the engine now on the Z23. And joining me in the commentary box here is Guido Lavrini. Guido is the Copernicus Space Program, Space Segment Program Manager for ESA. That means that uh, he oversees all the Sentinel satellites. It's great to have you with us. Thank you very much indeed, Guido. Thank you for having me. Um, uh, Guido, you also know quite a bit about Vega. And... Uh, Although it was developed by ESA, it actually started out as an Italian project, didn't it? Uh, not quite, not that completely. Vega grew out of a joint cooperation between the US and Italy back in the 70s. It was a project called Scout. It was launching from uh, a base off the coast of uh, Kenya, near the equator. And at a certain point in time, in 1992, the US withdrew Parce from this cooperation and the Italian continued uh, alone on a new program called Zephyro. And Zephyro in Italian is the name of a wind. And it was based on the carbon fiber technology. And Vega, which in Italian stands for Vettore Europeo di Generazione Avanzata or Advanced Generation European Vehicle, is a launcher developed by the European Space Agency. So it's an ESA project, but you're right, the prime contractor is Italian, is ELV, which is a joint venture between the Italian Space Agency and Avio, who is a company based in the south of Rome. And right now we are flying like the wind, burning the Z for Zephyro. Second stage, and now... About to switch on the Z... Nine, Zephyro Nine. I'm, my pronunciation's probably a bit wrong. I think it's Zephyro in Italian. Du Zephyro. Zephyro. And Zephyro. the next phase, separation of the fairing, which we don't need anymore because we are 131 kilometers above our planet, and we don't need it because there's hardly any friction. Vega's going from strength to strength. Let's hear from the CEO of Avio. Vega has set a world record in terms of accuracy and reliability, with eight perfect launches in a row from the maiden flight in February 2012, exactly five years ago. Vega has demonstrated a unique ability to deploy satellites in multiple orbital planes with unprecedented orbital maneuvers. Vega is the smallest of the European launchers family operated by Arianespace. 
Vega was developed by Avio as the industrial prime and is manufactured at 65% in Italy and for the rest across Europe by a team of selected and capable industrial partners. I'm speaking to you from our plant in Colofero, where we produce Vega and we are now developing Vega C, which will fly for the first time in 2019. Behind me, you see the production of the first carbon fiber motor case of the P120C, the solid rocket motor which will equip both Vega C and Ariane 6. This will be the world's largest monolithic solid rocket motor manufactured in carbon fiber. It is nearly 12 meters long, has a diameter of 3.4 meters, and contains 142 tons of propellant. Today, Vega will take to space Sentinel-2B, one of the satellites of the European constellation Copernicus. The Avia team, together with its industrial partners, Ariana Space and the European Space Agency, had once again a chance to demonstrate the strength of Europe's space strategy, which hinges around our close collaboration and teaming. I therefore wish the best success to the ninth mission of Vega. Interestingly, the uh, carbon fiber that he mentioned there uh, was used in a spin-off to build some great big structures Separation inside. Oh, we have separation of the Z9 inside uh, ITER, which is um, a nuclear fusion uh, experiment. Du du RAX, du durée 50 secondes. So our flight path, Guido, uh, takes us north. Where are we going to be flying over? Uh, we are actually flying at the moment over the Caribbean, and uh, we will soon uh, go over Canada, then uh, over the Arctic, and then we will come down on the other side of the Earth. We will coast uh, the, let's say, East Asia coast, and finally we will go over Australia, where we will separate our satellite. And this will happen uh, 58 minutes into the flight. And the, range acquisition par la station de Bermuda. and the range operations manager is confirming there that we picked up the signal at the Bermuda tracking station. That's in uh, the Caribbean, one of the Caribbean islands in the north of the Caribbean. Uh, so we are now flying over the Caribbean. Why are we flying north, Guido? Uh, Sentinel-2 is an Earth observation satellite, uh, and uh, this satellite are usually placed on an orbit that goes over the poles. This because being on such an orbit, you exploit the rotation of the Earth underneath to image the whole Earth. You have to imagine that you're peeling an orange and stripe after stripe, you are peeling it completely. And these stripes, in the case of uh, Sentinel-2B, are very, very wide, almost 300 kilometers. And this is what allows us to image the whole Earth with one satellite every 10 days, and now with two satellites every five days. And at our latitude, our meaning European latitude, every three days. There is no other system in the world that has this performance. So, Avon, the upper stage, has switched on its engine. That's going to burn for seven minutes. So we've started the next phase of the journey because Avon has, what, effectively taken the wheel, as it were. <laughs> 